Well, hello everybody! Welcome back to G-Bear's Off-Grid Ways, a homestead in the desert. I told you I had two of these panels, so I brought them out and hooked them in series. And, uh, because I was kind of getting serious. But, uh, <laughs> now I hooked them in series just to see what I would get out of them. The sun is off of them now because it's getting late in the day. But, uh, still holding 13.4 in the, uh, in the battery, so... That's a good sign. Now on the other battery that's in the ore cart, um, I tried the uh, thing with that somebody sent me about using uh, my arc welder to go 35 amps into it five minutes at a time, three times, and then uh, see if that worked. Well, it made the battery worse each time. So I'm not sure if that's a, a good uh, way of going, but the battery was old and um, completely stone dead before I started. Well, actually, I, I had gotten some power back into it, if you remember the video, but uh, didn't hold up. And uh, then uh, after doing the arc welder thing on it, the uh, uh, when I hooked up my battery repair unit, it said uh, uh, battery failure. So it wouldn't even take anything after that. It was it was done. So nothing ventured, nothing lost, right? All right. So I cut the top off of the uh, tank here, and then I found the plugs I needed to plug the the holes. But I want to change these brass ones over to um, galvanized. Uh, I don't like using uh, brass on stuff like this. That's for plumbing. But uh, sorry about the wind, guys. It's starting to pick up. Anyway, um, now I'm going to have to uh, get some, makes three legs to anchor on this thing. Because this is going to end up being the bottom. And then up on the upper side up there, I'll be cutting a, um, a hole into it to where the uh, um, chimney, the stack, comes out. But down here, I'll be cutting a large door in here. And that's because <clears throat> this is my burner. Oh, that's heavy. This is my burner that's going to go in there. Okay. Well, I put this together today. Let me set it down here. Yeah. So I put this together today. I'm using an old brake drum and uh, a piece of uh, two inch pipe, I think it is. Uh, might be two and a half inch. No, it's two inch. That's yeah, two inch pipe. So, anyway, uh, I drilled some three eighths holes into it and now I had it marked to put some uh, more holes, some five sixteenths holes. I don't know if I'm going to need those or not. I'm going to try it as is, and then if I need them, I'll I'll drill those in and uh, redo it. But the waste oil is going to go into here, and uh, the bottom of this is open, the bottom of this pipe, and that will go through when I have this unit upside down. I'll be cutting a hole in here the size of where that pipe will fit right through. So it'll draw air from outside down low along the floor. It's going to suck that air up into this tank when the flames get going. And that's going to work as a, uh, a blower, sort of. So it's going to make the flame a lot hotter. So, <clears throat> excuse me. I just ate a couple of peaches and uh, my... Uh, throat is a little gummed up with a sugary flavor but anyway yes yeah, so I'll have a hole here big enough so I can put that drum in and stick that pipe out the bottom here and of course the legs will hold this up off the ground probably about a foot off the ground and uh, once I <clears throat> get all of that set up then I can get the fire going and show you how this thing works and that's when the heat is on. <laughs> 
Yeah, so let me put my tool back in here. All right, so that was one of the things I did. And I did have this uh, um, brake caliper also. This is stuff I find out in the desert when I'm out metal detecting and stuff. And I always bring it back and people go, what are you bringing all that junk home for? Well, I might use it for something. Well, I am using it for something. Now these make nice um, burners because they got these holes, these air holes in here. And uh, you can weld up the holes and put the, um, the metal pipe down through the bottom. And then you run your oil into this area here. And not only are you sucking air from outside, but it'll also suck air through these openings and um, help everything get out of the flue faster. The more air you add, the hotter the flame gets. It's kind of like a oxyacetylene torch, which I have right there. And when you light the gas off, it burns uh, kind of with a, a, a weak flame bent over. And a lot of smoke coming off of it. And as soon as you crack the oxygen open, it turns to a hot blue flame and it sounds like a jet engine. Uh, that's what the um, waste oil burner is supposed to do when it's uh, put together correctly. So we'll see about that. And uh, we'll see how that goes. So I <clears throat> brought this out of uh, storage because uh, the center hole in that brake drum wasn't big enough for that uh, two inch pipe. So I uh, set it down over here and then worked it around. You can see all the metal filings here. I uh, worked it around until it uh, was the right size for the pipe to fit through. And then I welded the, the pipe into the middle of it. And then the, the holes that were there, I put little metal tabs on the other underside, tacked them in place, and then I went inside and I filled the hole up with um, weld. So that's all done. So another thing I did was I found some uh, heavy gauge uh, pipe, I told you, and I made these uh, um, cable ends. And these are for one aught, uh, the, that's one slash zero one aught um, wiring. And those are for the cables that go to my um, inverter. Now, uh, the uh, holes have to be enlarged. That's why I got this other one, so I can make larger holes. But I also want to make them a little bit longer so that I can make the hole larger without getting too thin around the outer edge. These are 5 sixteenths, and that's what my battery cables are. So on the end where they connect to the battery, these will work. But on the end where they connect to the inverter, they're going to need a... Um, I think it's a half inch hole, so I have to make it bigger, and that's what that's for. So anyway, anyway, anyhow, anywho, this is an air hammer unit that I made from an old uh, air tool, and that's a a um, grease cap from a truck, and uh, I use that for crushing rock. So I can crush ore and see what's in it. And crush ore? Crush ore what? <laughs> anyway, that's that part. Now, I did have this piece out here because I set this in here. And then I set the other drum on top of this. And uh, the pipe would rest on there where it stuck out the back side. So I could gauge how much it was. But... Uh, then I said, well, I don't really know how much I, I want it sticking out yet. So I just put a little extra. I can always cut it off later. All right, so what else did I do? Well, I got that propane tank up here. And uh, while I'm at it, this Rockwell unit, um, you guys ever get an opportunity, if you're gonna go off grid, and you're going to be working alone a lot if you can get a hold of one of those things grab it because this is the uh, the best second set of hands 
that you could ever come up with. But you see I used a couple of ratchet straps here trying to hold one of these tags steady while you're trying to crack the, uh, the valve loose. You just can't do it. So I put the straps on here, strapped it down. That's as solid as can be. And then I got my wrench on here and, and cracked this loose. Now that's what the old valve looks like on these things. <clears throat> and uh, what I will be doing is, because this is three quarter inch iron pipe now that goes into the tank, is I will put a three quarter to half inch uh, bell adapter on there. And that's where I'll come out of the tank with my um, valve because this this tank is going to be my waste oil tank. That's what the waste oil is going to go into. So um, up here, I marked it. I was going to put a, a hole here and put a large cap on there so I can refill through that hole. But I might do it right right at the top and just cut a big chunk out because I notice this bottom's a little on the rusty side. So I'll just uh, cut a big hole out of there and then weld a piece of uh, two inch threaded pipe on there and get a cap on it. And that'll be where I fill it up. So this is a, I think this is a seven gallon um, propane tank. So that'll hold seven gallons of uh, waste oil. And then this is not going to be work for a, um, a stable set of legs. So I will be cutting that off. The only reason I didn't do it today is because there's still um, propane odors coming out of here. And when I was standing here earlier when the sun was out, I could actually see the vapors coming out of there, even though the tank is empty. So don't ever think that just because the tank is empty and there's nothing coming out of it, that it is completely empty. The fumes in there are very, very, very flammable. And if you get a spark or anything right in this area, you're going to get a foomph. And this thing take off like a rocket across the desert. So you don't want to do that. I can actually smell propane this far back from that tank. So I will, before I do any um, cutting and welding on this, I will pour some water into here. Uh, probably a quart should be enough. And shake it around, rinse it out really good. And then I can start doing my work. So yeah, this will get a bell reducer. And then it'll get three legs on the, on the bottom of it coming off. I'll use some angle iron from these um, old bed frames that I pick up out of the desert all all the time and uh, you know there's like this you got one piece of bed frame I got one piece of bed frame well you can't make a bed out of it so I would always use the metal right so there's there's what that's for and uh, yeah I'll make three legs for that I'll make three legs for that although this one because it's a lot heavier I was thinking I might use that pipe and cut the pipe on an angle, weld it onto the side so that they, they they stick out on angles like that and it gives it a lot of stability so it can't tip over. Because that one's gonna go inside this shop to keep me warm. And I got a lot of cleaning out and organize, organizing to do in here, but that's down the road. Uh, as they said in the Oz, move on down, move on down the road. Yeah, so anyway, <laughs> that's that. And uh, that tank, I realized, is aluminum. It's not steel. So I can't really use that. This one is steel. But uh, I still might come up with something to use that one for. I might adapt it over and turn that one into a compressed air tank for um, carrying compressed air like if I got to go put some air in the tire on the motorhome instead of carrying the whole air compressor out there and getting set up and running an extension cord and all that stuff, I can just fill up the tank in here, take it out there, put some air in the tire and come back. But I have to get, put, get my, I got an extra air gauge around somewhere. I get that out and I got to make an adapter to go in the neck of it and so forth and so on. All right, everybody. Thanks for joining me. Don't forget your thumbs ups. Don't forget to share and subscribe. 
and I got a birthday coming up here on Tuesday. I'm getting old. Matter of fact, I think I'm catching up with dirt. Oh my gosh. Thanks everybody, this is G-Bear signing off.